Emma has lived inside an orphanage for the only 11 years of her life. She, along with Norman and Ray, are considered geniuses among the rest of their peers. Their hot MILF mom Isabella takes care of all of them with a smile on her face. They may be eating warm meals together every single day, but as they will soon discover, this is not an ordinary orphanage, and they are actually the meals being prepared. They're tested rigorously like robots every single week for hours, and as always, Norman, Ray, and Emma are the perfect scorers. Connie thinks she definitely failed today's test like always, but at least today is the day she's going to finally meet her adoptive parents. Before finally moving to her new home, Connie tried saying goodbye to everyone, but ended up crying before leaving. Isabella walked her to her new home and whistled the same melody she always did. After her mother left, Emma wanted to clean the mess but saw Connie had forgotten her precious money here, so she began rushing to figure out what to do. Ray told her that she can still make it if she ran, so Norman tagged along to support her through the dark. They make it to the mysterious gate they've seen throughout their life and walk inside until they approach a truck. Emma tries to look around for Connie and eventually decides to check the rear of the truck. However, what she sees shocks every inch inside of her and Norman comes to take a look. He musters the courage, and when he peeks, his mind breaks. The sight of Connie, a person they once called family, destroys them. They hear an old man's voice and run behind the truck to hide, sneaking underneath to take cover. They continue talking, and Emma gets a peek, seeing demonic-looking creatures walking around. Norman and Emma do everything in their power to stay quiet, but the demons pick up Connie and stick her inside a cryogenic canister, calling her valuable merchandise. She's high-quality human meat, made exclusively for the rich. Lately, the devils have been getting low-quality six-year-olds, but they'll soon be getting the perfect scores and ask Isabella if they're ready for shipment. Isabella tells them they'll be ready soon, but one of the demons notices something is off and looks underneath the truck. However, Emma and Norman have managed to run away at the last possible moments, and Emma wonders if they've lived their entire life just to be thrown away like food. The demons hand the mother the toy, and Ray asks them how their trip went. Norman claims they couldn't make it, and they head off to their room. Inside, Norman tells Emma to escape with him, but Emma can't do such a thing. The other kids here are her family, and she doesn't want any of them to die. Norman understands how painful it might be, and tries to comfort her. <laughs> The next day after lunch has been served, Emma stares at her calm mother who smiles as if nothing happened. Norman comes and tries to remind Emma to continue smiling. He's already discussed his plan with Emma. They know that their mother likely found the bunny, so she knows someone among them has discovered the truth. In order to keep their knowledge secret, they must pretend like they couldn't see anything last night. Norman has also realized that there's a reason they haven't been shipped out yet. The demons likely cared about the perfect scores because they want the best brains to develop more, but they never keep a child who's above 12 years old. Judging by their findings, they realize that the soonest shipment will likely be on their 12th birthday, which is in two months. Inside the forest, Norman and Emma try to draw a map of this place. Since demons are always guarding the gate or it's shut, they decide to investigate the forest. After a while of running through the forest, they eventually discover a giant wall standing in their way. Norman tries to climb the tree but slips and busts his ass, so Emma climbs up in his place. When she looks out, all she can see is a three meter thick wall and more forest on the horizon. Because of its smoothness, they can't climb it, but if they had some rope, they would be able to escape. They hear the bells ringing and rush back before their mother gets suspicious. However, one of the younger children comes and says that Nalia is missing. Isabella takes out a compass object, telling the child that she'll find who's missing, and enters the forest. A while later, she arrives back, and Norman and Emma realize that she knows their exact locations. All of this was just to show the defective children that she can track them using her tracking device, and she walks past them. Ray sees all of this, but keeps it to himself. Norman plans on getting rope, but Emma is worried that there might be cameras watching them as well. However, Norman hasn't found any cameras, and he's been looking for them harder than L looking for Kira. What? Don calls for Norman because the clock isn't working, and Emma stares at the board and cries for Connie. After fixing the problem, Norman finds Isabella staring with gleaming eyes towards Emma, asking her why she hasn't been so cheerful recently. After a few moments of cold stares, Emma gets into character and says she's just been sad since Connie's left. Ray comes to let everyone know that the dinner has been prepared, and Norman uses this chance to get Emma away. 
As they walk, however, Isabella asks them if they went to the gate yesterday, but Norman claims they were too busy playing tag to go there and break the rules. Isabella says it's fine as long as they didn't go, and they walk down the stairs. Emma collapses from all the intense stress she was under, and Norman tries to give her his hand to stand up. He's also shaking, but Emma gets back up, and they become determined to do this. As they leave, Ray watches over them. That same night, Norman looks around for things to use as a rope and grabs a tablecloth. They spend the next day creating the rope and hiding it, but they still haven't figured out what to do with the transmitters. Emma wonders if Ray would know the solution, and Norman thinks he would be helpful but will try to confront Ray himself. However, Ray interrupts their conversation and asks what they're talking about. He's been following them ever since that night and asks them what happened at the gate. He asks them to spit it out already, but while they walk away, Isabella notices they're missing. Ray believes everything they were saying, but Ray says that he only believes it from Norman since Emma is a useless moron. You're a victim! Mm. Ray tries to figure out which kids will be able to join them in their plan, but Emma tells him that she's going to bring everyone. Ray thinks there's no chance for all of them to run away since most of the kids can barely even run. Not only that, but they're living inside a farm that harvests humans. The outside world is likely just a place run by demons who will attack humans at any chance they get. Their only option is to leave the young ones behind, but Emma says she will never allow that to happen. She wants everyone in her family to be saved, and never wants to see anyone else ending up like Connie. She tells Ray that she's not going to negotiate on this, and Ray asks Norman if he's really going with her idiotic plan. Norman says that he's not going to forsake an Emma. After all, she always puts herself over others. Even if he's on a sinking ship, he will follow her to death, because he likes her more than anything, and will do everything to continue seeing her smile instead of crying. Norman pledges he will do everything in his power to plug all the holes in their sinking ship. It might be insane, but this world is even more insane, and he asks Ray if he's going to be joining them as well. The dinner bell rings earlier than usual, and Carol, a new baby, will become part of their family along with a new mother. Her name is Karone, and she's going to be watching over them along with Isabella. Norman is angry that he now has to deal with another adult along with the transmitters, but Ray tells him that this is a good thing. Having two women means twice the plot. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. Regardless of where this new baby and mother came from, they still need to locate the tracking devices. Ray thinks that a device that doesn't leave a scar is too advanced to exist, so there must be a place somewhere on the body where a scar has been left. They're too old so the scars have faded, but Norman comes up with a genius idea to check Carol since she just came here. Karone congratulates Isabella on all the great accomplishments she's had. Isabella is the best mother around currently, and produces the highest quality meat. But Isabella tells her to quit with the lip service and give her a different kind of lip service on her specific kind of lips. What do you mean by that? She hands Karone information to memorize about the kids, and lets her know that some of the kids have managed to learn about the demons. Even though it's against the rules, she tells Karone that she knows who the culprits are, but commands her to simply watch over them. She tells Karone that she's nothing but a guard and to just be an additional pair of eyes. Karone pledges her allegiance to the mother of all plots, Yor, but inside her room, she talks to Mr. Potato Head and thinks that she will finally be able to achieve her dream of becoming a mother. If she manages to locate the kids and collect hard evidence, she will definitely be able to take Isabella's spot. Karone plays with all the kids, but she sneaks up behind Roy and Norman and tries to greet them while staring at them with gleamy eyes. As she walks away, Norman thinks that they're already being suspected, and think they must hurry before Isabella catches on to them. Meanwhile, Emma plays with Carol, and Four Eyes over here is about to ask her a question. But Emma looks behind Carol's ear, and sees a bruise. When she was younger, her mother said those bruises were just from blood tests, but Emma feels a metallic device in there. Four Eyes no longer has her bruise there because it's likely faded, but she wonders why Emma's so interested. Emma says it's because she's interested in bulges and holds on to Carol, thinking she's going to have to protect all the other kids. After dark, Isabella recites codes and tries to reach out to the headquarters, but hears the voice of the grandma asking if the three perfect scorers are ready for shipment. Every other plant has failed, so she's their last lifeline. Isabella comforts the demons and promises to have the shipment ready, and they think that this harvest is going to be the greatest while offering their prayers to him. The next day, Emma plays with herself to kick the ball away, 
and Karone notices her actions. She lets the others know about the devices behind their ears, and they start thinking of a way to destroy the transmitter without alerting their mother. For now, it's a possibility that breaking it could alarm their mother, so they shouldn't try to break it unless they're ready to escape. A person watches over their conversation from the bushes, and Ray thinks that he'll have a solution for turning off the transmitter. Still, they should focus on training the kids to be more physically capable for their great escape plan. Throughout the next few days, they begin playing with all the kids to increase their endurance, and Ray focuses on teaching them strategies for hiding throughout the forest. The kids try out their new methods for avoiding capture, but they have a long way to go. Karone thinks their playing looks enjoyable and wants to get to know them better, so she asks to play with them with a time limit of 20 minutes. After counting down, she begins running towards them like a track star, and lures out all the young kids with creative leaves to capture them. She catches every single one of the kids and even blasts through the trees like she's a superhuman. When she's about to catch two of the last kids, Emma runs to rescue them and sprints with all her might to get away. She makes it to an area filled with stone pillars, but Karone knows that Emma is likely gassed out after carrying two kids while running. She looks around for her and tells her to just give up already because if she saw the harvest that night, then she's going to be on her side. <laughs> With just a few minutes left on the clock, Norman and Ray run away from her and split off to create distance. She tries to reach for Norman, but his superior parkour abilities allow him to dodge her in the field and even vanish before her eyes, shocking her with his abilities. Ray lets her know that the time is up, and she feels defeated by their physical prowess. There's one person she can use, however, and she smiles to herself. A few weeks have passed since that day, and they've realized that Karone hasn't done anything. Norman thinks that there's likely a spy amongst the kids keeping tabs on them, and Ray agrees someone is definitely a traitor. Lunch is ready and Emma stares at everyone entering. The family she once thought was living in peace is all a source of suspicion. After a few days, Isabella meets with Carone and tells her she's noticed how she's been testing their physical strength, but tells her that she's not worried. To her, Carone is nothing more than just an insurance policy, so she should just be a good obedient girl and act as her pawn. If she continues being a good girl, then Isabella promises that she'll see to it that she becomes a mother. Karone leaves the room in defeat and picks up her doll and rips it apart. Her anger grows as she stomps on the doll, promising that she will bring Isabella's downfall and become the mother herself. The kids continue training and create tag teams to make their escape plans stronger. Afterward, Norman asks Ray how long until he's created his transmission hacking device. Ray thinks it will be ready in 10 days, so Norman says they will make their escape then. It shocks both of them that it's going to be so rushed, but Norman believes they need to escape before winter to make sure they survive the outside world. In order to support their plans and discover which kid is spying on them, they plan on meeting with Don and Gilda whom they suspect the most. Inside the old library, Emma tells them that their family is being sold off to bad people, but while Don thinks that she's just joking, Gilda believes everything they've been telling her and tells Don to believe them. Norman and Emma hide the truth about the demons, saying that the kids were just sent to horrible families. After they left, Ray gets angry with him for hiding the truth since they won't know who the spy is. However, Norman has prepared a trap, saying he told Don rope will be under Norman's bed, while Gilda will have her rope hidden inside the bathroom. Depending on where the rope goes missing, they will discover who the actual spy is. While everyone slept that night, Gilda woke up and left the room. But Emma noticed. Underneath Isabella's doorstep, a piece of paper was left, saying the rope is underneath Norman's bed. The door opens in front of Gilda, and Carone welcomes her inside. Emma tries to eavesdrop, but Gilda tells her that she doesn't have anything on her mind and thanks her for being so caring. As she's about to leave, Carone reveals that she knows Emma told her everything, terrifying Gilda. She promises to protect Gilda as she snitches, but Gilda pushes her away because she doesn't want to get stitches. Carone whispers in her ear, saying that if she ever seeks protection, she knows where to come. Afterward, Gilda tried to sneak back inside, and Emma is glad to see her. She cries and hugs Emma, but Carone's anger grows because she wants to find someone who will supply her with information. The following morning, Norman asks Ray why he thinks someone would offer to sell out his own comrades, and Ray reveals that it could be to avoid being shipped and eaten by the demons. His words continue puzzling Norman throughout the entire day, and he asks what Emma would do if she discovered someone had been selling them out this entire time. Emma says she would try to rescue them because they're all family after all, and her purity brings a smile to Norman's face. He goes with Ray to check above the bathroom, finding that the rope is still there. 
They then head to his bed, but there's no rope there, and Ray thinks it's a shame that Don has been selling them out. Gotcha, bitch. This was Norman's 300 IQ move. Instead of setting a trap for Don and Gilda, he purposely laid four traps, two to trick Ray into believing he was being honest. However, the actual trap intended for Don was left in the dining hall, and Gilda's trap was in the library. They never had any knowledge of the trap underneath his bed, so it's awfully coincidental that it went missing when Ray is the only one who knew about it. Ray lays down in defeat, but begins laughing. He's surprised Norman was able to catch on to him, and he reveals that he's been spying on them this entire time. Norman knew Ray was the best person for influencing every action in their plan, especially with his intelligence to keep him from being detected. Norman asks Ray how long he's been working for Mother, and Ray says he's been doing it ever since he was brought to this place. He asks him if the transmitters can actually be destroyed, but Ray won't tell him anything since they're going to abandon him now. Norman rejects the idea of this, saying that he will keep him by their side on three conditions. One is guaranteeing their safety, two is telling them everything he knows, and three is defecting. Norman wants him to turn sides and become a double agent. Ray wonders why Norman is so adamant on remaining friends with him, and Norman says that Emma's words inspired him to continue being a family. Still, he's puzzled why Ray hid the bunny so they could find out about the demons, and why he's been constantly supplying them with information rather than just hindering them. He wonders if Ray is truly their enemy, and Ray says that he volunteered to be a spy out of his own will. It was all to lay groundwork for his great escape plan. He went out of his way to make an offer with his mother. If she was to benefit from his work, he requests that she delays his shipment until he was 12 and buy him all sorts of items from outside the farm. This entire time, he's been using those items to create an object that neutralizes the transmitter. So in this overall game, he's the biggest trump card to overthrowing their mom. All of this info will be their way of escaping, and even sending them to the gate that day to see Connie was just to save them. He has only one condition to supplying Norman with all the information and lying to Mother, and that condition would be to pretend like he's going to save everyone for Emma. But when the time comes, he wants him to abandon all the others. Regardless of all the younger kids' improvement, Ray sees them as deadweight. If he doesn't accept his condition, then he's better off just dying here. Norman reluctantly agrees, but thinks that this is a miserable situation. Ray walks off confidently and Norman struggles to think of something. Everything has just went perfectly for Ray. But while Norman keeps thinking, his mind finally realizes something and he laughs it off. And Norman realizes that he messed up. At night, he sneaks into the room to meet with Isabella as planned, but makes up lies to keep her distracted, saying that Carone has been making selfish moves against her. She tells him that Carone is just a last resort insurance since he was a useless watchdog that didn't stop Norman and Emma from seeing the demons. Ray claims he sold off his best friends ever since and is constantly spying on Carone, so she better pay up. Isabella honors their deal and says she'll give him whatever he wants. Inside the tunnel, Norman runs away with the rest of the kids, but when he turns back, he sees the sight of all of his comrades falling. Even Emma lies with her life sucked out, and the giant demon appears behind him. Norman wakes up terrified, but tries to keep a smile to not concern the other kids. Inside the forest, Emma asks what happened about the spy, and Norman walks out and reveals he's the one who's been spying on them this entire time. Emma's mind is overloaded with information. Ray tries to explain that he was going to let them know about everything, but they accidentally left the bunny at the gate which caused Isabella to be suspicious. However, he's on their side and will do everything to save all the kids. Emma thinks this isn't like him and thinks it'll be great that everyone's going to be saved. However, him knowing this entire time troubles her, and she asks him if he was experimenting on other kids to develop his transmitter blocking technology. She wonders what happened to those kids, and tells him to promise to never choose kids like that. He promises he won't, but in the distance, Don gets angry that they're not trying to rescue Connie from the outside world. Gilda wonders if there's something much more sinister happening in the background. She's noticed something is off about the house, and met with Emma to tell her about it. Inside the house, there's likely a secret room hidden next to her bedroom. Ray knows this room is probably the way she reports to HQ for other mothers, but Ray never knew where it existed. 
Don suggests for them to try invading it, but Ray tells him they won't be gaining anything from that, except exposing their knowledge of the place. Not to mention, if Karone catches them in the process, she will have all the evidence she needs to get rid of them and become the next mother. Ray asks him if he could prepare dinner so it's not suspicious that all of them went missing, and Don reluctantly agrees to leave. However, when he walks down the stairs, he turns towards Isabella's room and knocks on it. Without any reply, he enters the room and tries to search for a secret doorway by tugging on the bookshelf. After a few attempts, Gilda pulls the door to the side, but the door is locked and someone begins to enter the room. Their heart sinks, however, Phil enters and says he was just playing hide and seek with the other children. The following day, Don prepares to execute his plan and runs into his mother to steal the key from her and shows it to Gilda. Even though it went well, Isabella's noticed something was terribly off about their actions. Inside the library, Emma shows them something she's discovered after being in the library for a long time. An author by the name William Minerva has multiple books here with secret messages. At the same time, Don finally opens the door to enter the room. Emma and her friends try to decode the message, and they notice that each circle has Morse code hidden inside of it. Don and Hilda close the door behind them and find a secret door into a downstairs area. They decide to enter and light a match. Meanwhile, the words doubt, danger, run, truth, harvest, monster, and farm are all hidden in Morse code. Norman wonders if this could mean there's a human society out there. Don and Gilda look around the room and find Connie's bunny, realizing that Emma was lying to them about her being alive this entire time. Norman thinks that it's definitely worth investigating these books, and Emma thinks there might be something hidden within for surviving in the wilderness. At the same time, Don and Gilda hear their mom entering her room and think they're done for. As Emma and the rest head to have dinner, they notice that the only two missing are Don and Gilda, striking fear into them. Don and Gilda try to move around to exit, but Isabella hears their movement. She is ready to open the door to see what could have caused the noise, but a kid barges in, giving Isabella the door to her secret room. She realizes she must have dropped it, and Don and Gilda manage to make it out through the other door. They meet together late when everyone's asleep, and Don reveals that they checked the room downstairs. Ray is infuriated because of how dangerous and reckless they were, so Don asks him what would have happened. Were they also going to be killed, like Connie whose bunny remained in that room? Emma apologizes for lying to them, and Don demands they tell them everything. After hearing the truth, Gilda and Don are terrified, and Don asks them why they hid the truth this entire time. He punches Norman down and goes on to strike Ray along with him. He asks Emma if they see them as dead weight who need to be shielded this entire time, and cries asking them how they lied to their family, to their siblings. He walks out to cool down, and thinks outside that it's not their fault for lying. He's ignorant and powerless, and feels like he's nothing more than dead weight on them. He wishes to be stronger, and Gilda comforts him, telling him he will become stronger. Emma comes out, apologizing for not trusting them this entire time. Norman and Ray come to apologize as well, and together they all make up. With a week remaining until their plan's execution, Norman begins to suspect Ray's words of saying he would do everything to prevent the two of them from being killed. Underneath his bed, Norman discovers Ray's actual plan and thinks it's amazing. While Ray talks with his mother, he lies about his injury and says Norman is planning on killing her to escape. She tells him that she'll make sure his plans fail. But she's received word from the brass, saying that the next shipment has been scheduled, and it's going to be on Ray's 12th birthday. The rest of the kids scout the forest and discuss their plan, but as they talk, Karone is seen overhearing them. She tells them she's seen everything. Last night, she heard all of them and she's so excited to finally get what she wants, so she twirls like a ballerina and asks Emma if they would like to team up with her. Norman wants to hear out her conditions, and Karone reveals she wants to team up with them so she can take Isabella's position as mother. She wants to escape her own situation, and reveals the number tattooed to her. She lets them know that she was also a girl raised in one of these farms, and that certain girls at the age of 12 get to choose to either die or become a mother. As long as they're nearly perfect scores and have a recommendation from a mother, they'll be able to have that choice. However, they'll never be able to leave the grounds, and she shows them the chip planted inside of her. If she were to ever leave the farm, the chip would discharge electricity to stop her heart. Additionally, if she were to ever die, an alarm would let the demons know, so killing Isabella wouldn't be an option. The only thing Karone wants right now is a peaceful life as a mother, so by escaping, she would be able to eliminate Isabella and secure her position. This is why she wants to cooperate with them, and offers her hand to Norman. However, Emma wants to confirm how she would guarantee their safety. Karone says Ray would expose her plan to Isabella instantly if she were to betray them, 
so she promises to keep this deal secret. Emma believes her and Norman shakes her hand. This excites her and she promises to give them any information they would want to aid their escape. Later that day, Emma feels that it's too convenient for Carone to help them, but Norman has already seen through her plan. If she truly cared about their lives, she would have helped them escape right away. She's just doing this to gain their trust and find concrete evidence to overthrow Isabella and ship them out. Finding Ray's transmitter blocker will be the only evidence she needs, but Ray assures them he won't screw up in hiding it. Norman thinks they can avoid the risks and gain information if they play their cards right. At night, Isabella walks to the gate to receive the most recent package from the demons. Inside is a letter along with a black box. Norman and Emma knock on Carone's door, and she opens it to let them in. Her lifeless doll creeps them out, and she says they can ask about anything they would like. Emma asks for the monitor that tracks them, and Carone is shocked that they've learned about it. The object only displays the locations of the children, but doesn't identify them. They ask her about where the trackers are located. She reveals it's in the ears, and they pretend to be shocked. However, she doesn't know how to destroy the trackers, so cutting the ears off would be the only way of getting rid of it. She goes on to reveal that there's five other plants like this one, and the outside world is inhabited by humans who treat the demons as equals. Norman asks how the security is, and she tells them that it's extremely relaxed because they rely on the wall and the transmitters to keep the kids trapped. Norman and Emma thank her for the information and begin leaving, but Carone starts laughing out loud hysterically, because while talking to them, she's discovered they've known about the location of the transmitter and how to destroy it. After all, they had absolutely no reactions to learning about the transmitter. They didn't even try to feel them behind their ears. She wonders what secrets they're trying to hide and asks them if they've heard of him. She says she'll tell them about him next time if they come back. Ray plays with his new camera while Isabella stares sadly at him. He takes a photo with his Polaroid and asks her if she could discuss their plan after lunch. The clock rings that night and Isabella crosses out the date, knowing that the day for their escape has finally come. The next day at the playground, Ray goes over the plan once more with the others. After lunch, he will try to lure mom away by selling out Carone. While this happens, he wants the rest to climb over the wall and scout the surrounding area. Don and Gilda leave, but Norman has bad news. Carone has discovered about their device for breaking the transmitters and will begin looking around for it. Norman wonders if Carone will find the evidence she needs before they can escape, but Ray says he's got that part covered. Carone sits in her room and wonders why the kids were lying about the transmitters and how they're going to destroy it. She realizes they've likely already made a transmitter blocking device, and that would be all the evidence she would ever need, so she decides to raid the house. In the kid's bedroom, she searches every single possible spot around Ray's bed, but Phil walks by and notices her searching. It catches her off guard, but she tries to say she was just cleaning the floor. After moving the bed and dresser, she finds a note underneath and realizes she's finally obtained the item she's been looking for. Emma and Norman hear her loud footsteps, but Ray smiles since she fell for his trap. Carone reads the paper because she's glad that she's found another piece of dirt on Isabella. She thinks that if Grandma was to find out, then Isabella would be completely destroyed without any doubts. However, she wonders how Ray would have known about this when Isabella herself shouldn't have a clue about it. Carone hears knocking on the door, and she sees Isabella holding a sharp object. She points it towards Carone who prepares to be attacked, however, Isabella gives her a letter and tells her to open it. Carone reads the letter, shocked and trembles. Isabella tells her goodbye, and all of Carone's plans have been shattered. Carone reads the letter, congratulating her on becoming a mother of the fourth plant. Isabella explains that she's been recommending her for ages, so Grandma is here right now waiting to pick her up. Carone's face doesn't resemble any sign of happiness, and she crumpled the paper in her hands. When Isabella left, Carone felt absolutely defeated. However, this is her last chance to destroy Isabella, so she stares at the pen and promises to never let Isabella succeed. Before she leaves, Carone had pieces of paper along with a pen and an object inside the white bag, and she hid them somewhere specific. She walked towards the gate and entered. Inside, Grandma was waiting for her with a smile, and Carone built up the courage while walking forward. She tried letting Grandma know and took out the piece of paper to show Grandma. After reading it, Grandma wonders if she's trying to say that the perfect scoras are trying to break out, and she tells her that she's exactly right. Still, the Grandma says as long as they're under control, it's perfectly fine, because she once did the same thing. 
She tells her that Isabella's children and her plant are special, and anyone who tries to replace her would greatly inconvenience Grandma since she brings the greatest profits. Carone realizes she's fallen for Isabella's trap, and a giant demon comes from behind Grandma. Isabella prepares lunch for the kids, and while they're all eating and enjoying dinner, Carone is about to be this demon's dinner once he eats her out. Ever since she was a kid, she took care of the baby toy until her 12th birthday where she was given the option of trying to live on as a mother. She shortly after received the scar and met Grandma. As the demon kept getting closer, she remembered the amount of study and skill development she underwent along with combat training. She kept the toy with her, and even now, it looked at her while she tried to battle off the demon. Throughout the years, she continued strengthening her abilities until she stumbled on a mysterious doctor having a conversation. Upon leaving the room, he had dropped a pen that she took and kept with her. Before leaving the farm, she left that mysterious pen along with pieces of paper for the kids to find them. The demon finally grabs her, and her last wish before dying was for the kids to escape with all their might. She wanted them to survive and to destroy this god-forsaken world. These were her last thoughts before the flower bloomed. Later that day, Ray meets with Isabella to fulfill his plan of distracting her. At the same time, Norman and Emma run to scout the walls. While they walk, Isabella tells him that she got rid of Sister Carone, and Ray runs away in fear. He opens her door to see that she's gone from the room. She tells him that she got rid of her since she was no longer of use, and the same will go for him now. He's always been her useful lapdog and she kept him around, even though she knew he was a lying double agent. She didn't want to let him go until the last moment, but things have changed so she will monitor his friends personally. He tries hugging her to stop her, but she nudges him away and locks him inside the room. While staring at the compass, she knows that Emma and Norman are likely the ones who are running. Dawn and Gilda get worried that they haven't seen Ray's signal, but Isabella comes out and smiles at them while walking towards Emma and Norman. Don runs inside to try and rescue Ray. He hears Ray bashing against the door, so Don runs with full force towards the door and breaks it down. Ray runs outside the house to reach Mother before she reaches his friends, but as Emma takes the rope out, her and Norman hear a person walking. In the distance, they see Mother approaching them and wonder how their plan could have failed. Isabella says it's been 10 years, but this is the first time they're going to talk to each other without any deception. She tells them that now they're nothing but breeder and livestock, but she still loves them from the bottom of her heart like they're her kids, which is why she wants them to give up resisting. She wants them to live a painless life, since it takes nothing but a moment to die while they get to live happy long lives. Emma says there's nothing peaceful about this way of living, and would rather feel countless pain while being free and alive. Isabella tells her the outside world is filled with misery and pain, and that they should just give up already. Norman says he's done being a good kid, and Emma rushes towards Mother to try and neutralize her. She tries to grab the compass. <laughs> In an instant, Isabella broke her leg cleanly, and Ray along with the others arrive. She tells Norman he did well to realize he should just give up. They're her precious top quality food, and she will make sure to raise them to be the best livestock until the very end. Isabella comes back, and Phil along with a few others notices that something is off with the way Emma broke her leg. But this isn't the worst part yet. When Emma broke her leg, Isabella told her that she will heal in a month or two since it was cleanly broken. This way, she can focus on celebrating tomorrow, because it will be Norman's final day with them before being shipped out. Norman realizes he's going to meet his doom, and that it's over for him. Back at home, Norman watches over Emma to make sure she's okay. She reaches for his hands and begins crying. Norman tells her that the plan isn't over yet, but she tells him to shut up because he's being shipped out tomorrow. His face is nothing but a warm smile, and he leaves to get some water, but at the fountain, he struggles to even twist the faucet, and the cup falls straight out of his hand. His mind is in complete disarray. Ray shouts in anger because he wants to find a way to save Norman. He tells Dawn and Gilda to get everything ready so they can escape tonight. Ray enters Emma's room, and he tells her they're going to save Norman tonight. Norman musters the courage to get back up again, and walks back to the room. Before entering, he makes sure to put a smile on his face to ease things for Emma. However, Ray is sitting there and they tell Norman to run away alone tonight. He apologizes because he won't, but they yell at him to do so. They want him to disable his transmitter and hide in the forest or somewhere nearby until the rest escape. Even if it may alarm the demons, Ray knows that they wouldn't increase security. 
Their two rules are to make sure livestock is raised in a safe environment without finding out the truth to make sure their brains develop properly. Norman thinks of a million things going wrong. But Ray knows more ways of solving all those issues and wants Norman to do anything to survive. Norman, however, refuses to do any of this because they might replace his shipment with Emma or someone else. He will not allow anyone else to die in his place, but Emma suggests that Ray can just break his leg too. If someone is hurt, they would no longer be top quality meat. Ray thinks she's a genius for her idea, and goes on to say that they could even catch a sickness to make sure they're absolutely not being shipped. They'll do whatever it takes to save Norman and she tells him that they're family, so she will do everything to continue living together with him. Norman cries and agrees to go along with their plan. Ray hands him the transmitter blocking device and tells him to scout the wall before hiding tomorrow. This was the item Ray spent six years trying to create from various items, and he's done all of this since the day he discovered the truth about their situation. Norman asks him how he was able to discover the truth, so Ray finally reveals it. Ever since he was born, he was a rare child that didn't have childhood amnesia. He still has all his memories from the time he was born, and remembers a dark place where he was hearing a lullaby. Even though it's all hazy, he remembers the way the demons looked and how the babies were split into five groups before entering a dark tunnel to come here. The gate doesn't lead to the outside, it only leads to the headquarters. However, this is the reason for the relaxed security, since they know no one can escape through the gate. Because of this, Norman will escape tomorrow and they will wait while Norman hides in the forest. At night, Isabella told everyone that this will be Norman's last night at the house with them. All the other kids tried to play it normally, but before sleeping, Norman opened his dresser and found the things Carone left, shocking him. During playtime the next day, Norman ran all the way to the wall with the rope, but decided to not activate the transmitter blocking device. He tied the rope to a tree and used it to help him run across the wall. He almost slipped, but finally managed to make it. The sight in the distance shocked him, and he smiled with a determined look. Emma and Ray stare at Isabella when she wonders where Norman could have gone. They're glad that she'll finally see that Norman escaped, but to everyone's surprise, she smiles and welcomes him back. All of them are shocked, and Norman's face is filled with defeat. Ray yells at him for not escaping, but Norman tells him he's not going to escape. He walks off and tells Ray to listen. <laughs> This is why security is unnecessary. However, there's still a way for them to escape. He shows them the structure of the entire farm complex. It's in the shape of a hexagon, and the headquarters is directly across from them. The rest of the regions are likely the other houses, he explains, so their only option is to escape through the bridge that is only found next to the headquarters. Phil comes in and says that mom is looking for him. Before leaving, Norman hands Ray the device that he didn't use. He explains that he didn't want to make a single mistake, and he's glad because it would have all been a waste. Emma tries telling him to wait, but Norman hugs both of them, and thanks them for making his life wonderful. While packing his items, he sees the nostalgic string phone that he once used. When he was sick, Emma would sneak in to try and talk to him. Their mother found out and asked her why she was here, to which Emma responded that Ray told her she would be immune. Ray said that the book claimed idiots are immune to sickness. Norman would hear everyone's plan, but Emma sneaked back in to talk to him. She handed him the cup phone Ray created, but Isabella pulled her out. From the other side, Emma talked and Norman heard her. This brought all of them joy, and now these are memories that Norman treasures. Before leaving for the final time, Emma couldn't bear the sight of her lifelong friend passing away. So before he turned to leave, she ran and threw away her clutches, trying to grab onto Norman. In an instant, she attempted to neutralize his transmitter so he could escape. But Norman threw her off of him and called her an idiot. She yells that she's not going to let him go and will not respect his wish. Norman's emotions overtake him, and he realizes that she's foolish and naive. But this is why he loves her. As he's about to grab her face, Isabella tells him it's time to go. He gets up, and Isabella warns Emma by saying she will end her if she tries something like that again. Norman finally exits, but while walking, he asks Isabella if she's truly happy. Hearing this question shocks her, and she tells him that she's very happy after getting to meet him. The doors to the gate opens, and Norman finally understands his fate. He walks towards the truck, prepared to meet his doom. However, Isabella says that they're going to be waiting here for a while, and Norman sees something that completely surprises him. The next day, Emma looks all around the house, but just keeps seeing signs of Norman missing. She's completely broken by this, but the kids notice that Ray has also been crushed since Norman's left. 
Don and Gilda try to meet with them that night, but Ray has completely given up. He no longer cares about running away. He apologizes to Emma and the rest. In her room, Emma bursts into tears but sees Isabella staring over her. She hugs her to try and ease her pain, but says that if she wishes for it, she can recommend her to become a mother. She holds her face, telling her that she can't do anything else but watch this miserable cycle continue happening. If she were to become a mother, however, she can live a peaceful life. Emma rejects this idea, so Isabella gets up and tells her to suffer until the very end just like she currently is. Days pass and Emma continues sinking deeper into depression. But she's not alone, as Ray is completely destroyed. Isabella continues watching over them, and smiles. Before they knew it, a whole month and a half had passed, and Ray's birthday is tomorrow. Inside the dining hall, Ray sings a lullaby and Emma asks him what he's doing right now. Ray says he's been chanting his goodbyes to this house since tomorrow is his birthday. Emma walks towards Ray, and he asks her if she's really thrown it all away. He knows that she hasn't given up in the least, and Emma smiles towards him. To honor Norman's sacrifice, she would never give up. They hadn't talked these two months and pretended to be depressed this entire time to throw suspicion off of them. Their mother had been eyeing them like a hawk, so Emma tried to make her blind to everyone else. Don and Gilda have been taking care of all the equipment and gear preparation. She's even developed a plan for escape, and Ray says they will be escaping tonight using her plan. Before escaping, they must clear two hurdles. First is mom's surveillance, so they must distract her at night and get her away from the kids. Second is the chasm beyond the wall. The bridge is a no-go since guards will be bound to be there upon hearing of an escape. So Ray has prepared the only possible solution, and shows her the countless oil canisters he's managed to garner. This will distract Isabella and he's additionally hidden 10 Molotovs in the hospital to set the other farms on fire. Still, he's worried about her leg, but Emma reveals that her leg is completely fine. Emma wonders why a fire would distract Mother from chasing after them instead, but Ray reveals he's already thought of that. He takes an oil canister and splashes himself. This is his greatest idea, because if he's put on fire, there's no way she would abandon a perfect scorer like him. This entire time, he's dedicated his life to destroying all of the demon's hopes and dreams. He's studied and worked hard to become the most valuable until this moment. They will not be getting to taste him, not over his dead body. Literally, this is his form of atonement too, as he'd let countless kids die without saving them. He doesn't want Emma to let their deaths be in vain, and throws a book to her. The clock strikes midnight and his birthday has finally arrived. Without second thought, he lights the match, and thanks Emma for the great life he's lived with her. Bye bye, Emma. Isabella hums the same tune she always does, but hears screaming that makes her begin running. Inside the dining hall, she smells something awful and opens the door to see fire. Emma is on her knees and crying for Ray. Isabella takes out her pocket watch and sees that Ray's tracker is still right there, so she wonders if he lit himself on fire. Gilda helps all the kids escape. Isabella handles the fire hydrant and wants to at least rescue the brain. The fire hydrant runs out and Isabella screams at Emma to run outside. However, she sees that she's already left, and goes on to look for her tracker. But the tracker leads her to an empty bathroom. Emma's position hasn't changed, and she pushes the bucket to see that her ear is the only thing that remains. Isabella realizes she's been trapped, and wonders if the kids had their shoes on. Emma sprints all out towards the wall and catches up with the rest. But the best part of all, Ray is still among them. When the clock struck midnight, Emma had run and jumped to catch the flame before it lit the fire. The other kids knock on the door and hand her the items she's prepared for the escape. Emma slaps Ray to knock some sense into him, and the kids have prepared the trap. They've filled it with fake hair and meat to create a real stench of a burning body. The only thing remaining is the transmitter. Ray is still hesitant, but she tells him that he can die somewhere else, and goes on to say those were Norman's last words. He had discovered that Ray planned to sacrifice himself as his master plan when he searched underneath his bed. In his letter, he had given her his last steps to take, along with a gift from Sister Carone. So this entire time, Emma's been following his plan after receiving his letter. This is how she lit the fire to deceive her mother. Isabella rushes to try and head downstairs, but notices that her door's lock is jammed. Ray asks Don how all the kids found out about the secret, and Don tells him they tricked Sister Carone into revealing the truth. That day, Emma had told Norman that he should let everyone know about the monsters to make sure they're on board with the escape plan. And since Isabella's only keeping her eyes on them, it would completely surprise her if all the kids were on board. 
so when they met with Sister Karone, the other kids eavesdropped, and the rest were slowly brought along under Emma's orders for the next two months. This is how they prepared all the necessary equipment and training to climb over the wall. When Emma finally arrived, she saw Norman's ghost pushing her to keep moving forward. While everyone leaves, Ray notices something is off about the count. Back at the house, Isabella has managed to get the box out and announce to headquarters that a fire has taken place. Ray wonders if this is really everyone, and Phil comes to tug at Isabella, shocking her. Ray asks her about the infants, and Emma says she's finally come to her senses. While she helps the rest carry the other kids over the wall, she remembers talking with Don and Gilda about the kids. During the winter, it would be unlikely for the little ones to survive. Emma's come to understand that she can't really take everyone with her, and still, there are other kids from other plants that likely also need their help. When she realized that, she brought Phil so she could tell him the truth. Phil takes it like a champ and believes everything she's told him. He's noticed something is off ever since Karone kept talking about the harvest and how she would search all of Ray's belongings. And he thought it was weird how Emma was so scared for Norman leaving. It finally clicked for Phil that all of the other kids had passed away and began crying. Emma promises to come back to them, so for now she's going to only take the kids six years and older to prevent them from dying. Still, she told Phil that she will come back for him within a year before he's shipped. But when they come back, it won't be just Phil and the other kids, she will make sure to bring the kids from all the plants. Isabella asks Phil where the kids are, and he runs to bring all of them towards her, slowing her movement down. She announces the emergency once more to headquarters, and the alarms go off in the distance. The demons enter the highest alert mode, and allow the soldiers to kill anyone except the high-quality meat. Emma knew the bridge is going to be packed with security, so she shows him the closest spot next to the wall. This was the place Norman scouted, but Gilder reveals that they've planned like crazy for this day. Don spent weeks getting stronger and stronger to make sure he can finally throw a stone that would reach the tree. And eventually, his throw was strong enough to make it all the way across. Without fear, Don takes a clothes hanger and zip lines down the rope like a champ. They prepare bottled rockets and throw them across, allowing Dan to tie them. All the kids begin ziplining one by one, just like all the days they'd trained. Ray wonders how they've prepared for all of this, and sees Norman's ghost next to him saying he told him so. He tells him to look because he also hesitated, but thanks to Emma, he saw the light that would make him believe it's possible. She's the unwavering light in his heart, and he tells Ray that she can give him the courage to never give up. Isabella receives news that the kids haven't reached the bridge yet, and knows the only place they could have possibly gone. A girl is nervous about crossing the chasm, and two of the little boys also get afraid. Isabella rushes to try and reach her, so Ray grabs the girl and tells Emma to tie her to him. He then tells the little boys to quit acting like girls and to man up already. Ray zip lines across, and Isabella makes it to the wall. She remembers being young and using the rope to jump across. The other two kids make it across, and finally it's Emma's turn. Before she leaves, however, she sees Isabella's face looking at her. They keep staring at one another, and with a cold glance, she says goodbye to the house they used to call home. And finally, she says goodbye to her mother and zip lines across. The ropes get cut off right after and float in the wind. Emma and the rest of the kids run away, and Isabella undoes her hair for the first time in years. She remembers when she was young and stared across the chasm at that same spot. However, she heard a melody playing from a boy's instrument and came to surprise him. She asked him what the melody was and asked him to play it once more for her. He began playing it again. She remembered the day when he was being shipped off by the now grandma. Isabella had cried, but he smiled at her, walking off to never be seen again. Isabella broke down in tears, wishing to run away that very next day in the middle of winter. However, Grandma had told her to come back, and she was offered to become a mother as well. Determined, Isabella took her hand and became the best mother she ever could. Eventually, she would give birth to a child and whistled the melody every day. On a random day while on the plant, she heard that same melody that she would always sing, and came up to Ray, asking him how he learned that tune. She hugged her belly, and Ray smiled at her, asking her why she gave birth to him. Isabella admits that she's finally been defeated, and pulls the rope back. She smiles, and wishes for her children to have a safe journey. 
She hopes that a ray of hope shines in their path, and she comes back to Phil, telling him that they made it out safely. She spent that entire night comforting the rest of the children, Emma and Ray Ray, and she was glad to finally make it out, thanking Norman. This was their first step, and a new day awaited them, a new dawn. Watch this next video, till next time my fellow legendary plot masters.